Welcome to the last Math for Game Developers in our series about shaders. Today we're going to talk about rim lighting. Rim lighting is interesting in that it's the only shader effect that we've talked about so far that's not physically motivated. And the idea, it well it's not entirely physically motivated, it does have some physical basis. The idea is that when you're viewing an object like this, the rims of the objects get little highlights. That's rim lighting. Little highlights like this. And the, the idea is that you put this on characters to give their outlines a little bit of extra detail so you can tell what's going on, especially in shadows. So let's take a look at how it works. Obviously, people don't walk around with rim lights on them all the time. But in video games, uh, we sometimes exaggerate the rim lights because it looks good. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm drawing two different situations. The green is the normal of the surface, and the blue is the direction from the pixel that we're rendering to the eye. And that I'll call V, and the normal I'll call N, N hat. So you can see in this first situation, N and V are almost 90 degrees separate. By the way, this over here is the I. So, in that case, you would have a very strong rim highlight up here. Very strong rim highlight. But, in the part of the surface facing the I, N and V are almost the same, and so you would have a very weak rim highlight. So, if R is the rim highlight variable that we're going to calculate. Here R would be about 1 and here R would be about 0. Now notice that this is the exact opposite of our dot product. Our dot product, remember, is a cosine and cosine looks like this. Where when the angle between the two vectors is 0 then the result of the cosine is 1, and when the angle is 90 degrees, then the cosine has 0. But we want the opposite. We want that when the angle between them is 0, we have a, a rim light value of 0, and when the angle between them is 90, we have a rim light value of 1. And we can do that with 1 minus cosine. 1 minus cosine will look like this right here. It's the opposite of a cosine. It's, like, it's an upside down cosine. And that'll get us what we want. So we can use dot product to calculate this r, and we'll have r equals n dot v, but then we'll say 1 minus to get that 1 minus effect right here. So that when n and v are pointing in the same direction, the result will be 1 minus 1, which is 0. And when n and v are pointing 90 degrees opposite from each other, will have 1 minus 0, which is 1. So that should get us our rim lighting. And there's a little tweaking that we'll have to do to get it to look good, but that's the basic idea. So now I'm going to flip on over to the code section and we're going to see it in action. All right, so this is a pretty simple implementation. Uh, we're just going to use stuff that we already calculated in previous videos. In the last video we calculated the vector that points to the camera, so we're going to use that except we're going to normalize it first. And then we're going to dot that with the normal vector that we calculated in our normal map videos. And there we go. Now this next line right here fixes up the rim light to make it look a little bit better. We're going to comment that so we can see how it looks without it. We need to do this fixing up. And here it is in game. This bunny is called the Stanford Bunny. And it's a special uh, mesh that people use when they're developing new rendering techniques. And that's what we're doing, so we're going to use it now. And you can see the difference. I can turn it on and off like this. And you can see there's a big difference between having the rim lighting and not having the rim lighting. But it is too much, a little bit too much right now, and so I'm going to turn on the fix up so that you can see the difference. I'm going to uncomment this, and then you'll see 
how it's changed when I go back into the game and there you go now it's very subtle which is what you want it to be again it's not a real lighting effect so you don't want it to be very overpowering because then your game will look maybe unnatural or maybe that's the look you want to have maybe you want it to look unnatural like that that's your artistic choice anyway we're gonna have it like this um, so now when I turn it off you can see the diff difference look at the rabbit's nose you can see there's there's a lot of definition in the nose right now uh, and I made the rim lighting blue so you can especially see what's going on here when I turn the rim lighting off now you can't really see the nose at all and then look up in the ear the ear has that that V shape to it and then I turn the rim lighting off and now that V shape is completely gone so the rim lighting is great for for making characters stand out and also some games actually use it as a selection mechanism for example Thief does this it will highlight objects in the game with rim lighting when you can when you can steal them so rim lighting is really cool and now we're done with this video next week we're going to cover something else